Hello my lovely people of the crafting universe. In this video I will show you my art journal page to inspire you to create your own art journal page. I'm starting in a very very simple and easy but very effective way. I'm taking a decorative paper from a small paper pad which I bought really inexpensively in my local home supplies store. The papers may not be very beautiful, but they are really good quality and they make a very good base for an art journal so that you do not need to start with an empty page, which can be daunting sometimes. I'm not even going to tear the page apart. I'm gluing it down as it is just to get rid of the white scary space and I will be putting on a lot of layers afterwards. So just a tiny, tiny fraction of this initial paper will be visible, maybe, when everything will be finished and done. Uh, so I glued the paper down using the gel medium. And now I'm using the magical stuff, which is the glazing medium. It is supposed to make acrylic paints dry slower, but um, what I'm after here is to make acrylic paints transparent so I'm planning to put a lot of layers on this page and I want them all to be transparent so, transparent. so even after five or six layers I still want to see traces of the first layers on my page so I'm putting a small dollop of acrylic paint in my palette and I'm adding about an equal amount of glazing medium mixing it mixing them together and then putting them on my page using a plastic spatula. It comes from a makeup store, but it is perfect for mixed media as it allows to apply paint uh, more, free, more freely, uh, less exact than with a brush. So I started with the delicious cream color. Then the next level was this rich teal color. And finally, I chose a very uh, rich orange, which I applied really randomly with no much rhyme and reason on my page. And when all those layers were dry, I took out the driving time. Driving. <laughs> I took out the drying time from the video uh, to make it shorter. Uh, but of course, let each layer dry before applying the next one. Uh, just to tone everything down a little bit, I put on one layer of white gesso, which could have been also an acrylic paint, and I'm repeating my layers. So I'm going in with the this very beautiful teal blue again, and the next layer is the uh, cream mustardy paint again. No, this time I'm trying to sort of keep one color on one side of the page, the other on the other side of the page. And again, I'm repeating the white layer of gesso to calm everything down and to bring everything together. And I've decided that finally I have enough layers of acrylic paint that now it's time to move on to different types of layers. And I'm using a background stamp with quite ornate text. I'm not even sure why I chose this one, as most crafters I have different text stamps. I have the same type of stamps many times. How do you choose one? So in my head I tried to find some reasoning. And this time mine for choosing this very swirly and decorative stamp was... I'm doing a slightly royal theme, so I'm choosing a quite richly decorated um, text stamp. So when that's done, it's time for the next layer again, and this time it's going to be embossing powders. And I'm not using the special embossing ink, I'm using the thick gel medium to apply it uh, more generously than ink could be applied. And I'm sort of applying it diagonally over my page and I'm using this uh, amazing embossing power by Theft After, which has a lot of um, 
uh, unusual little grains uh, in it uh, and it melts into beautiful amber looking like gorgeousness on your page. And of course one gorgeous embossing powder is not enough. Uh, let's use another one. These are embossing powders from Thetapter's Bake Texture line and they are, in my book, the most gorgeous embossing powders in the market at the moment. And this one is really rusty color but it goes well I think with my teal and orange scheme which is starting to develop on this page. Heating the embossing powder again. I don't know a single crafter who would not enjoy watching embossing powder melt. <laughs> and here it is. I'm bringing it closer so that you can see the structure which is developing on the page. So there are not only colors, the depths of different layers of color, but also this very tactile embossing powder surface. With the background done. It's time to move on to the fo focal point and I'm grabbing my ambery orangey uh, gel prints from my stash and choosing one that's more yellowy, more orangey because I'm going to draw a pumpkin on it. And if I can choose a gel print I would usually do that just to have some richness and depth of the color even though I'm going to paint over it. So I'm drawing a very rough pumpkin shape and cutting it out and then I spend good 10 minutes coloring the pumpkin. I used my ink pens but I did not leave the coloring process in this video otherwise it would just be too long. But I tried to use the traditional pumpkin colors like oranges and browns and also, just to repeat the colors of the background, I added the touches of uh, teal, blue, and I think maybe even some pink was there. So I consider the pumpkin finished and I'm gluing it onto the page. And I'm again using the gel, heavy gel medium because this print was not made on a very thick paper, so I don't want it to crinkle very much. So I'm using thick gel medium. And here is my fo focal point. Oh, I cannot pronounce the word focal point. Uh, I took this photograph of uh, uh, Dixon Hall Lewis, which is um, an American statesperson of the 19th century. I really loved this picture and the way he looked and his facial expression which was so uh, smiley and calm and I thought it fits perfectly to what I'm trying to do on this page. So, um, I, and I found the image on the free uh, images website so it's, it was free to use in my, in my art. And I'm gluing the figure down, sitting on my lovely pumpkin using the same heavy gel medium and just to make the figure to sit better into the page I'm giving it a shadow along with the pumpkin. I'm using my very favorite method to create a shadow which is um, a charcoal pencil which I either smudge with finger or like in this case I used a barely wet brush to smudge the color and I wanted to give a crown to my lovely person sitting on the pumpkin and I've used a glue pen and then to just to freely draw the outline of the crown and then I applied some gold leaf but the glue which I used was not very thick so it was the wrong choice for this kind of job so I'm going over my not so successful crown with an art glitter glue it is thicker so 
more of the gold leaf can stick to it. And this time I made sure that I'm very patient, that I let the glue dry before I remove the excess using a brush. And I was much more successful. <laughs> Somehow the crown turned out to be quite <laughs> um, thick and big. It uh, reminded me a little bit of a hat. Hey, but that's life. So be it. He will have a big fluffy crown. <laughs> uh, so I'm um, uh, just marking the borders of the page just to break up the uniformity of the background and to draw your eye more to the focal point. And then finally all that was left was to glue down the sentiment. I'd rather sit alone on a pumpkin than be crowded on a throne, which is a slightly so shorter version of the words attributed to Henry Thoreau, which is an American poet. So let me leave you with some still images from this art journal page. I hope you felt inspired. And if you like the video, do hit the subscribe button and leave a comment. And I see you soon in the next inspirational video. Bye-bye.